from the trenches to the skies. How warplanes led to modern air travel. By Brody Bigger. During the First World War, from 1914 to 1918, planes were one of the most innovative new tools employed on the battlefield, changing how wars were fought forever. Aviation opened up a new frontier for combat and paved the way for the future of transportation and travel in the world. A, I will describe the key components of combat prior to World War I, like cannons and cavalry, and discuss their strengths and weaknesses. We will focus on our changes in tactics, like the introduction of trench warfare led to countries having to find new ways to survive and to win. These changes in tactics changed the way wars were fought and how future conflicts were decided. Finally, we will describe how the evolution of aerial combat and reconnaissance led to inventions like the use of lighter aircraft components and more powerful engines, which impacted modern warfare, commercial air travel, and logistics. As Edward Rickenbacker said, aviation is proof that given the will, we have the capacity to achieve the impossible. Aircraft did not begin as machine gun toting metal monsters of the sky. Their roots start back in 1903, when the Wright brothers invented the first working aeroplane in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Their plane became a staple of the early 1900s, causing the militaries of the world to attempt to change these puddle hoppers into killing machines. The wars of the 1800s consisted of infantry, artillery, and cavalry, who ruled the battlefield with ease as cavalry cut through lines of enemies, infantry held the forefront, and artillery besieged the battlefield from afar. But all these methods had two things in common. They were confined to the ground and were relatively close to one another. World War I battles in Europe were primarily fought using trench warfare. In trench warfare, troops fight in trenches and tunnels. Trenches were often protected with barbed wire. This newer style of warfare allowed the infantry to be better protected from traditional artillery. The barbed wire and deep random trenches made the use of horses obsolete for reconnaissance. Military commanders needed a new way to find out where their enemy was determine how they were equipped, and where they were headed. Both sides needed a new way to achieve success. Aerial combat was one of the most deadly forms of combat towards the end of the war. However, in the beginning, it was no more than pistols, grenades, and not as well-known bricks. Pistols were not very accurate, grenades would bounce, and bricks were heavy and difficult to throw but all of these were placeholders while mounted guns were in development. Bombs were also dropped from larger planes from the field to inflict massive amounts of damage. The first military plane was adopted by the United States military and was called the 1909 Wright Military Flyer. It was a two-seater observation plane used for taking photos of enemy bases if needed. Zeppelins, large balloon-based aircraft, were also used in early World War I for reconnaissance and to drop ordnance. However, they could not fly in bad weather and were slow, moving targets. Chain guns were the next big thing. As engines became larger and more powerful, they became heavier and allowed for machine guns to be mounted on planes. The first planes with mounted guns used the pusher solution, invented by the Vickers Company in which the engine and propeller were behind the pilot, allowing a gun to be mounted on the front of the plane. This design was used by the British throughout the war. Some countries tried to mount a gun on the front of the plane with the propeller. However, the gun was not synchronized with the propeller, causing them to become filled with holes and stop working, sometimes ending in disaster. Anthony Fokker, a German, engineered a plane with a synchronized machine gun allowing for continuous fire without fear of destroying the propeller. The M5K, or Fokker Scourge, was the first plane to use this new technology, and its devastating results against the Allies. 
metal planes were utilized in the later years of the war, with the German company Junker creating the first all-metal aircraft, the J-1 Junker. And then, after many experiments, the J-7 Junker. This was the final design of World War I. These planes made, an, made of an aluminum alloy called duraluminum had a higher resistance to bullets than the ones made of cloth and wood. Together, we have looked at the first time that humans used the air to inflict damage down below on the soldiers on the field. But now, we look further into the future. During World War I, the Curtis JN-4D, also known as Jenny, taught pilots to fly. After the war, it was adopted by the United States Postal Service and flew mail across the United States. This allowed packages to be delivered much faster than previously possible. In 1914, St. Petersburg Tampa Airboat Line was the first commercial air carrier using the Benoist Model XIV to carry a pilot and one passenger across Tampa Bay, Florida. Commercial airliners didn't change much until the 1930s when Boeing invented the Boeing 247, which could carry up to 10 people and could fly across the country in 20 hours. The Martin M-130 was the first plane to fly non-stop the 2,400-mile distance between San Francisco and Honolulu, Hawaii, which at the time was the longest air route in the world. These revolutionary events caused airlines to become more available to the common person instead of something only available to the extremely wealthy. Aircraft carriers were first used in World War I near the end of the war in 1918. In World War II, aircraft carriers were a critical resource for both sides. These carriers allowed countries to bring airplanes to wherever the battle was, and they were crucial to the fight in the Pacific. Then, in the 1950s, the game changed again, and four engine planes became the standard. Planes could continue to fly even if two engines were not working. Then, in the 1960s, the engines became bigger and better. Trips that previously took months to complete by land and boat could now be made in a single day. We continue to see the development of larger and faster planes, capable of carrying hundreds of people and large quantities of goods, around the world. Today, we have looked at how the introduction of aircraft during World War I opened up a new frontier in the skies and changed modern aviation and air travel forever. The main points I want you to remember are 1. During World War I, combat reconnaissance completely changed because horses could no longer be used in trench warfare. This forced countries to use a new way to observe their enemies, airplanes and zeppelins. Two. After World War I, in the United States, planes used to train military pilots were repurposed for commercial use, like the delivery of mail. 3. Innovations in airplane design caused by battlefield trial and error led to the development of lighter metals and larger, more powerful engines. 4. The introduction of lighter materials allowed for the creation of larger planes that could carry troops or civilians around the world in exponentially shorter time.